Hello and welcome to the channel. Um, in my last video we had a quick unboxing of the Quattro, the SV405cc camera, a quick look at the filter drawer as well. Uh, in this video I would like to just do a quick uh, overview, uh, quick first impressions uh, of the Quattro and what I, I think of it. Uh, yeah, my name is Tony, this is Ars the Astro. First of all, can I give a big shout out to all of my uh, new uh, subscribers and all subscribers, old and new. Um, got 140 now. The uh, channel is going, growing so quickly in such a short space of time. It's absolutely amazing. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, if you are new to the channel, uh, please feel free to drop a like and a subscribe. Uh, drop a comment in if you wish. Uh, if you want to ask me any questions, feel free. And if uh, there's an email address somewhere available in the in the about section of my channel as well, if you want to drop me uh, an, uh, an email. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. Uh, right, Quattro uh, and my first impressions. Um, we managed to get first light on <coughs> 2nd of January. Uh, Happy New Year to everybody, uh, by the way. Um, so. What do I think of it? Well, first of all, you might notice that it's not covered in tape. Um, if you watch QF's videos, QF the Lazy Geeks videos about about the Quattro, uh, you'll see his is just covered in tape everywhere to try and stop light leaks um, around, uh, especially around around the focus. So then he's got a cap to cover cover the back and everything. Um, I actually just wanted to see what is this thing like straight out out of the box, no fiddling, no touching. Just strap your image train to it, strap your guide scope on it, let it rock. Let's see, let's see what what this thing uh, can do. I haven't even adjusted the collimation on it. This is the collimation straight out uh, of the box. I did throw a laser collimator in it uh, just to have a quick quick look. It's not far off, but it isn't bang on collimated. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to see what is this thing like straight out of the box. What can it do? Uh, because I think if you want, the thing about Kyo's videos, I think it, it makes it a bit scary owning uh, a um, a uh, Quattro, just purely because you think you've got to do so much to it to get you to actually make it usable, as some some people people call it. And I kind of don't don't agree with that. I think you know, let's let's look at what it does. Out of the box, if it's good, then any kind of fiddling we can do with it only then just makes it makes it be uh, better. And this thing's good. It is it is crazy. Um, so uh, first of all, why did we choose the Quattro? We had the one thirty p. So why did we choose this thing? There's kind of three reasons. Um, this one's slightly fatter. This is a six-inch scope. The uh, Skywatcher was a was a, a five-inch scope. Um, so that's reason number one. Uh, reason number two is uh, the focal length on this is shorter than what the focal length on the one thirty p is. So the one thirty p is six hundred and fifty millimeters. Uh, natively, this thing is six hundred millimeters. So natively, it is a, it is an f four telescope. So it's a faster telescope. What do I mean by faster? It just gathers more light quicker. So that's reason number number two: shorter, shorter um, um, focal length. And then the last thing was um, the focuser is a two inch focuser. The focuser on the um, 130p is a rack and pinion one and a, one and a quarter inch. It's not the best. And you can't put things like coma correctors in it uh, and, and that kind of kind of thing. Uh, so this comes with a Crayford focuser um, with a ten times reducer on it. So you, um, you've got the normal normal focusing parts here, and then you've got the ten times reducer here. Um, it sits on this uh, uh, monorail. And it's literally a shaft that sits on the monorail and pulls it in in and out. 
but it does it by friction rather than through by um, uh, rack and pinion. Um, so that's a lot better. It's a lot sturdier. It holds. It's quite a bit of weight here, so it holds that quite nice and stu steady uh, and, and firm. Uh, so those are the three reasons that uh, the three things that are different between the um, Skywatcher and the one thirty. Um, why did I choose the Quattro over some of the other F4 6 inch uh, telescopes out there like the Stellar and everything um, this thing comes with a coma corrector simple as that the similar coma corrector it's not the exact same one but there's a, the, there's a similar coma corrector um, from Skywatcher which doesn't have the reducer but is still uh, an F4 coma corrector for, for Quattro's um, is about £260. So overall, as a rig, it's a bit of a bargain. So that's that's kind of kind of the reason we chose the Quattro over the the um, Stella Lira and, and other available options. You've seen on the community post we did I rigged everything up just to try and get a feel for how everything was. And then we had to balance it. So because we've got a hybrid strain wave mount. We've got uh, strain wave on the RA gear, so we don't need to balance that because there's no counterweight shaft. Uh, but the deck is a standard worm gear, so we do have to, have to balance deck. And I think it's recommended for even on strain wave mounts to try and balance the deck a little bit. But um, balancing on this is a little interesting because there's a lot of weight up front. So the weight, the focuser, and you know all the imaging train that's going in here adds a lot of weight to the front. So you can see on the dovetail bar, the dovetail bar is quite slammed far back. Uh, it's actually, but the, the, the screws that hold the Vixen to the rings are actually right up to the end of the Vixen point. Um, the reason for that is it just helps with the balancing. Um, and what we can and then actually do, it's a bit of a cheat this, is we're then using, we can move the guide scope up and down to aid with um, um, balancing. So if I, for instance, need to get something, um, dew shield or something on the front, which is going to add more weight on the front, I can move the guide scope back uh, a little bit. Uh, and if we, you know, I've got a focuser, uh, uh, or sorry, I need to get an automatic focuser, so if I put one of those on as well, that's going to add more weight to the front. So. I'll need to move that further back to be able to balance it out. But what that does do, it kind of helps with uh, cable management. So all my cables run on the inside of the gap in the in the uh, uh, dovetail. So I've got a USB running up there to the camera, and I've got the power from here, which is a power takeoff uh, for the mount, to power the cooling on the camera as well. Um, you can see it all runs up and inside this. Uh, inside the dovetail so because the dovetail plate is moved so far back it will lift all the cables up um, above anywhere which it, it, it could actually snag on and then I've got this plastic covering just to kind of aid so if it does come against something it can just roll over it um, but I have no problems with this worrying about cable snags on this at all um, in fact when we got set up on, on Thursday uh, I got set up, I got everything in, in focus, recalibrated the guiding, um, um, pointed it at, at a couple of targets just to try and get a feel for how, uh, um, how it was. And then I came um, um, inside, came, came in and sat down on, on the laptop and remote, remote controlled it for the entire night. I didn't go back out to the telescope, which is a first for me. And normally if it's doing a meridian flip or something, I'll be... Like running in to make sure that nothing's snagging or, or anything, or, or it's it's going to have 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 any issues at all. And it was it was absolutely absolutely perfect. In fact, the target that we actually wanted, I actually wanted to kind of image, wasn't hasn't hadn't risen above my house. My house faces uh, from where this gets set up in the in, in my garden. My house is east of it, and uh, the target was on uh, Orion's belt. Um, which didn't rise above my house until about half past eight. So we'd actually come inside and we were sat inside pointing this at uh, uh, Bodes and Cigar Galaxy um, M81 and M82 and we did uh, like an hour's worth of one minute subs against that just for something to kind of 
image and make sure everything was kind of um, all right. Uh, and then when, as soon as uh, the Horsa Nebula, which is what we wanted to, to image, came came above, we um, we pointed the telescope uh, at that and um, started imaging. Uh, we managed four hours and ten minutes, which is uh, 55 minute subframes. So 50 times five minutes of frames. I think the, the result is exceptional for a, for, a, for a first light. Really, really pleased. One thing we did do is um, for Christmas, my children bought me uh, this filter. This is a SV Boney UHC filter. So it's one of the cheaper ones. It's not like uh, an Optolon L-Extreme uh, or any of the kind of dual narrow bands filters uh, it is quite broadband uh, I'll put the um, image up of uh, the uh, the band pass on it so you can see what lights actually pass through but it's it's just, just it's a cheap filter I thought let's give it a go see if it see if it kind of helps with the with the imaging it helps with the imaging you'll see that very very shortly so yeah it, it is an, an an excellent telescope really really is I'm really pleased with it I think the results on first light, considering we've not touched it at all, we haven't collimated it, we haven't tried stopping light leaks, we've literally unboxed it, put it on the tripod, picked up as this imaging tray, set it outside, and let it rock. And um, yeah, I think the results you will see are absolutely amazing. Right, I'm gonna leave it there. Watch to, uh, to the end of the video and you'll see the final results. Um, but yeah, thanks for uh, everybody for watching. If you uh, like what you've seen, then please drop a like, drop a subscribe, to all the uh, YouTube stuff, and we will see you in the next one. Thank you very much.